Welcome back to Simplifying Synthesis. In this video, we are going to look at strategies for improving the stability and synthesis of psilocin derivatives. This work was published in the Journal of Medicinal Chemistry by the Bremberg, Wennerberg and Odell groups. In their paper, Synthesis and In Vitro Profiling of Psilocin Derivatives Improved Stability and Synthetic Properties. Psilocin is a naturally occurring tritomia alkaloid with serotonergic psychedelic properties and is an attractive candidate for the treatment of a range of psychiatric disorders. It works by interacting with the 5-HT2A serotonin receptor and this is involved with mood regulation, perception and cognition. This interaction increases brain connectivity and it has been shown that this temporarily boosts communication between brain regions that don't usually interact. It has been proposed that this change to the default mode network may help reset certain rigid thought patterns that occur in conditions such as depression and PTSD. In nature, psilocin is more typically found as psilocybin, which is a naturally occurring prodrug that has a phosphate group attached to the hydroxyl group. When ingested, this phosphate group is cleaved by alkaline phosphatase to produce the bioactive psilocin. This work aims to introduce different groups to this hydroxyl group and create a range of different prodrugs that can modulate the stability and pharmacokinetic profile of psilocin. This is quite an attractive strategy for people researching psilocin, and we've already seen this approach used before by the Ficini group, whose work we covered last year. So let's start with the synthesis of these prodrugs. In the first step, benzyloxyindole reacts with oxalic chloride, attacking in an enamine type fashion to form a new carbon carbon bond. The reaction mixture was then sparged with nitrogen to remove gaseous HCl, and then a solution of dimethylamine in THF was added. The dimethylamine attacks the remaining acyl chloride moiety, displacing chloride to form the amide in a 78% yield. This method offers improvements over previous syntheses, which used gaseous dimethylamine, as the dimethylamine solution is much more convenient to handle in the lab. This method also forms the product as a precipitate, making it easier to isolate and take forward without further purification. This amide was then reduced using lithal. This reagent adds a hydride to the amide, forming a tetrahedral intermediate, with the oxygen coordinated to an aluminium species. This is eliminated, forming an aluminium intermediate, which is further reduced by another equivalent of lithal. The ketone in the molecule is also reduced via a similar mechanism, forming the product in an 84% yield. With this in hand, the benzyl group was then deprotected using hydrogen gas and palladium on charcoal. The choice of solvent proved to be critical in this reaction, as the psilocin product was susceptible to over-reduction, forming an unwanted byproduct. By carrying out the reaction in THF or toluene and limiting the reaction time to six hours, they were able to achieve a clean reaction. Due to the instability of the product, the reaction mixture was filtered under nitrogen gas to remove the catalyst, and the solution of product was added directly to the electrophile needed for the next reaction. This solution of electrophile consisted of an acyl chloride or anhydride and a slight excess of cesium carbonate. The electrophile reacts with the hydroxyl group to form an ester and the reaction mixture is passed through a syringe filter and then evaporated to yield the crude product as an oil. These oils could then be redissolved in ethanol and the addition of one equivalent of fumaric acid induces a precipitate, forming the products as fumarate salts. Using this method, the synthesized library of esters including short, medium and long chain esters, a cyclopropyl ester and a benzyl ester. This method also allowed them to produce a range of carbonates and a carbamate. As well as these carbon-based prodrugs, they also explored bioisosters of the phosphate group. To synthesize a borate ester, they simply heated psilocin with boric acid and then evaporated the solvent to yield a brown oil. As before, this was then precipitated as a fumarate salt. The sulfate was synthesized using similar methodology, using sulfur trioxide in pyridine. Finally, to install a phosphate group and yield psilocybin, psilocin was first deprotonated with beauty, and this was then reacted with tetrabenzyl pyrophosphate. After quenching the reaction and precipitating the intermediate, it was then subject to catalytic hydrogenation to produce psilocybin with a 39% yield. With this library of compounds now synthesized, they first examined the compound's chemical stabilities, which would allow them to understand their shelf life and handling requirements, 
and predict their stability in stomach acid. The esters, as can be expected, did hydrolyze over time in a one molar solution of sodium bicarbonate with half-lives varying from 900 to 1100 minutes. The more electrophilic carbonates showed lower half-lives in basic solution, while the benzyl ether, lactam and sulfate proved to be stable under these conditions. Under acidic conditions, the esters also showed hydrolysis, with variable half-lives at a 1 molar concentration of HCl, though they were stable at a more dilute concentration of 0.1 molar. The carbonates showed greater stability under acidic conditions, as did the lactam, sulfate and phosphate. The borate ester prodrug, however, proved to be very unstable under all these conditions, with a half-life of less than 5 minutes in all solutions. With the chemical stability determined, they then looked at the prodrug metabolism in vitro. This is important, as psilocybin undergoes significant metabolism before reaching systemic circulation, and different cells metabolise it at different rates. The serum concentration of psilocin is dependent on the kinetics of these different metabolic processes. The researchers looked at two primary metabolic parameters, the stability in the presence of liver microsomes, which are subcellular fractions that contain membrane-bound drug metabolizing enzymes, and the stability of the compounds in plasma, which is a component of blood with the blood cells removed, but contains all the proteins and other constituents of whole blood. This contains enzymes, such as esterases, that can metabolize the psilocin prodrugs. These experiments proved to be quite difficult to conduct due to the rapid degradation of the prodrugs and the difficulties in accurately quantifying the peak areas in the LC-MSMS traces due to interferences stemming from the biological material. To try circumvent this, they conducted the assays without the addition of the NADPH cofactor, which many enzymes require. However, these experiments showed similar results. This indicates that these prodrugs are metabolized by esterases or other non-NADPH-dependent enzymes. This is consistent with other esterase label compounds, which are known to present difficulties in microsomal stability studies. To gain more insight into their metabolic stability, some of the compounds were then assayed using plasma. The benzyl ether protected compound and psilocybin both showed stability under these conditions, while both of the esters studied and the carbonate proved to be very labile. To slow down this enzymatic hydrolysis, they repeated the experiments with plasma that had been pre-treated with acetonitrile to precipitate the enzymes. In these studies, the ether, phosphate and cyclobutyl ester showed greater stability, while the acetate and ethyl carbonate compounds still showed rapid degradation, indicating that very low levels of esterases are required for the activation of these prodrugs. As these drugs are intended for oral administration, and it is desirable that the prodrug is fully converted to psilocin before reaching systemic circulation, they carried out stability studies using simulated gastrointestinal conditions. To do this, they conducted the assays in fasted state simulated intestinal fluid that was supplemented with porcine liver esterase. These experiments were conducted in triplicate and the half-lives were determined. While these times varied, they all showed very rapid hydrolysis. As these compounds are so labile, the concentration of esterase was quite low, at only 20 IU per mil. However, in the fastest state, an esterase activity of 270 IU per mil is typically observed. Using the data they gathered, they calculated that the half-lives under these conditions would be mere seconds, translating to an incredibly rapid gastrointestinal absorption. To verify this, they measured the amount of prodrug remaining after just one minute, and even using such a low concentration of enzyme, they still showed that up to 93% of the prodrug could be metabolized in this time. To verify that it was enzymatic and not chemical hydrolysis, they repeated some of the experiments without esterase present, and this showed that the prodrugs were stable under these conditions. With the studies and the prodrugs complete, they then turned their attention to the synthesis and stability studies of psilocin salts. Amine-based drugs are quite commonly formulated as salts, as this simplifies the manufacturing process, as they are generally easier to handle and store. The acids that they chose to use to make these salts were hydrochloric acid, which is very commonly used in the literature, benzoic acid, as psilocin benzoate has already been reported to be very stable for IV infusions, ascorbic and boric acid due to their antioxidant properties, trifluoroacetic acid due to its high acidity and weak counter ion effects, and phosphoric acid, which is very commonly used in pharmaceutical preparations. The powders were assessed after three weeks in a freezer at minus 18 degrees Celsius. 
The chloride, dihydrogen phosphate and TFA salts all showed instability over this time period and the chloride and TFA were both hygroscopic which is a very undesirable property for pharmaceutical formulation. They then made solutions of these salts at a concentration of 2 mg per mil in a 50-50 solution of acetonitrile in water and assessed the thermal degradation at 60 degrees after 6 days. All of these salts degraded in this time with the exception of the ascorbate which still showed 42% of psilocin remaining. The calculated half-lives were all in the range of thousands of minutes with the exception of the borate salt which degraded very rapidly. To assess the photostability of these salts the solutions were irradiated in a photoreactor for 15 days and the results were compared against a control sample which had been kept in the dark. The hydrochloride proved to be the most stable formulation under these conditions while the borate and benzoate all showed full degradation. It is important to note that the borate control sample in the dark also degraded indicating that the light is not the sole source of the instability. They then assessed the chemical stability of these salts. They all showed good stability in a solution of 1 molar HCl, while they all degraded in a weekly basic solution of 0.1 molar NaOH, with only the ascorbate showing a trace of psilocin remaining after 24 hours. They also showed good stability towards oxidizing conditions in a 0.3% solution of hydrogen peroxide, with the exception of the borate salt, which instantly decomposed, and the dihydrogen phosphate and TFA salts, which showed 17 and 22% degradation after 24 hours at room temperature. Overall, this paper is an important step forward towards the clinical use of psilocin psychedelics. They developed a simple and scalable synthesis route for psilocin esters, which are easier and cheaper to make than psilocybin. They also give the details on the stability of different salts of psilocin, which until now has been buried in the patent literature, and ultimately they lay the foundation for a large-scale manufacturing process of psilocin derivatives. Well, that's everything for this video. Join me in the next one, where we will be looking at the total synthesis of bipinatin J.